Thanks for joining me, Ashley the Wildlife Host, for another edition of Super Science Saturday with the Staten Island Museum. Have you ever wondered how scientists are able to document changes in the environment due to factors like water or air pollution? They are able to do this by studying what are called bioindicator species. Today we're going to learn exactly what that means as well as discuss different species that help us understand our world better. What is a bioindicator species? Bioindicators, otherwise known as indicator species, are defined by Botanica Encyclopedia as an organism that serves as a measure of the environmental conditions that exist in a given locale. This could be a species that indicates the quality of the surrounding waterways, or a species that shows there is a lot of species richness in a certain area. Mollusks. Bivalve mollusks, like mussels and oysters, have been studied as a bioindicator due to their ability to accumulate or build up metals, toxins, and other pollutants that are found in their environment. One of the main reasons that make these species particularly useful when trying to get this information is the fact that these species don't move much. They attach themselves to rocks and then eat by filtering the water that passes by. This helps scientists by pinpointing that contamination is in fact happening in the same area the mollusks are located in. With this knowledge, they can make decisions about how much of the environment is being affected and where they should focus their restorative efforts. Amphibians. It's not only mollusks that can tell us about the environment. Amphibians are also very good at this as well. A little too good. These species are very sensitive to the conditions they live in. If these species spend a lot of time in water, especially fog, they can indicate when there are pollutants in the water. They are also sensitive to the degradation and destruction of their habitat, and their absence is also an indicator of the health of the environment. Lichen. Believe it or not, even non-animal species can help us understand the environment more. Lichens, which are actually both fungi and algae that work together symbiotically, are thin indicators of air pollution. They are particularly sensitive to nitrogen. If they receive too much nitrogen from the air, it can affect their chlorophyll within the algae. This chlorophyll is necessary for the algae to produce food and sunlight. The sugars produce the for both the algae and the fungi. If the air isn't good for them, it's not great for us either. Marine mammals. Currently, scientists are proposing several different species, including fish, mollusks, birds, and mammals as indicator species for plastic pollution. Plastic pollution is one of the major obstacles facing humanity and the environment as a whole. Mollusks have been proposed because they ingest microplastics, although it has been shown that they are selective about the plastic they intake, so scientists are being careful about potentially using them as an indicator. Still, others suggest large oceanic birds indicators because of the high amount of plastic debris that is routinely found in their stomach. Ideally, a species or several will be found that indicate the abundance of plastic pollution that can be monitored in a way that does not require their death. This may be hard due to the varying size of plastic pollution and the effects that they can have on an animal's body. Bees. Bee species are also bioindicators. When bees are healthy, so are their environment. We benefit from this because they are the main pollinator of crops worldwide. However, in recent years, we have seen mass colony collapse due to many reasons. Bees are sensitive to agricultural pollutants, overgrowth of bacteria, heavy metals, and even radioactive particles. The more we pay attention to the plight of bees, the more we can do to clean up pollutants and have a healthier environment. Which indicator species caught your attention today? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining me for another edition of Super Science Saturday, and we hope to see you again. Bye!